Will you please join me in prayer, whatever you are this morning? God of all creation, God of mercy, love, and prayer, we have come to praise you today. God, cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us for your glory. For you, O oh God, are one and holy. Amen. This morning we gather at the table. We come from many places, differing in age, differing in race, differing in orientation, politics, and even location. We have scattered around this great state in the middle of a work today to celebrate World Communion. As we come together around the table, we discover that our differences are not something that we tolerate, but our Differences are indeed a blessing. The more difference we bring, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. So come, children of God, just as you are. Whatever you are in this journey of life, you are welcome here. Here in this place, here in this community, here at this table. Come, children of God, come and remember with us. Come, children of God, you are being invited home on love's renewing tide of bread and wine. Let us raise our hearts and voices, scattered as we are, in our opening hymn.
Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, reading from chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and from chapter 6, verses 4 through 13. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guest have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test them, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said. Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. There was a child that entered into a Methodist church in Brazil. He didn't say anything, but he wandered around the church, which was a little bit distracting. But the people of the church did not try to stop him, get him to sit down. The street children in Brazil were looked upon with both fear and compassion. As the service continued, he was intrigued when the pastor got up and lifted up a loaf of bread. He came to the front of the church. He sat on the front pew. He looked intently at the pastor. The pastor invited people to come and receive the bread and the cup. He continued to look, and then he broke his silence. He said, will there be enough for me? Will there be enough for me? Is a question that we sometimes ask because we know that resources are limited. Would there be enough for me? In the readings that we had today from the Gospel of John, from chapter 2 and from chapter 6, there are two miracles that occurred because it didn't seem like there was enough. In the first miracle of, that Jesus took water and made wine out of, they had run out of wine at a wedding feast. This was certainly something that would cause the family embarrassment. But Jesus' mother was there, and she took charge of the situation, and she told the servants to do whatever Jesus asked them to do. And so he told them to take those water jars used for purification and to fill them up, and they did. It said they filled it all the way to the brim. And then he said to take it out to the steward for the feast. And he took a taste and he said 
that this was unusual because most people served the good wine first, and when the guests were drunk, then they would bring out cheap wine. But they had good wine at the end. Most of the time when we look at that story, we're looking at the fact that there um, was a miracle that occurred, that Jesus did his first miracle, in fact. But what I'd like to point us to is the abundance of the miracle that Jesus did. It wasn't just that this was good wine, but can you imagine how much wine it was? We sometimes overlook the fact that there were six jars that says that they would hold 20 to 30 gallons. And so let's say that it's 25 gallons that is held in each jar on average. That would be 150 gallons of wine. Now, I don't know how much a wedding feast takes in that day, but 150 gallons of wine sounds more than sufficient. And if we were to put it in our terms, because we don't necessarily buy wine by the gallon like we do milk, but instead we buy a bottle of wine, there's about, 100, there's about five bottles in every gallon. And so we're talking about 750 bottles of wine. That must have been quite a party. But the point that I would like to show is that where there was scarcity, now there was abundance. In the second miracle story, there is a great crowd that is there to hear Jesus teach and perhaps see a miracle or two and they get what they wanted. A miracle occurs, and Jesus is in charge of this situation. He asked his disciples what they could do to feed all these people. And Philip said, well, it'd take more than six months' wages to feed, to buy food for all these people. And Andrew came up and said, I found a little boy here that has five loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many? And again, there is scarcity. There's more than 5,000 people here. How can we feed all of them? But Jesus organizes the group, tells them to sit in groups. They begin to take that. He does what is familiar to us. He took and he blessed the bread and he broke it, gave thanks for it, and he gave it to them to be distributed. And again, I think the thing that gets lost is just some finer points. It wasn't that they just took a little bit like we do at communion. It has something instead where it says that uh, they took as much as they wanted. That's a key phrase there. They took as much as they wanted and when they were satisfied. And Jesus said, gather up the fragments. There's 12 disciples, 12 baskets. They're all full of bread. Again, something that seemed to be too scarce now becomes an abundance. And so I think we have a God that's trying to demonstrate that with him, there's not just enough but there is an abundance. Later on in the Gospel of John in chapter 10, Jesus would say that I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Some other verses in our scriptures that talk about the abundance of God include 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. Or perhaps this verse in Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. Or this verse from Philippians 4.19, And God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And yet, we still have the question, will there be enough? 
the disciples didn't seem to get it at all. And one of the times in the scriptures that Jesus seemed to be somewhat exasperated with them is found in the Gospel of Mark. Besides the feeding of the 5,000, Mark also records a second feeding miracle of 4,000. It's in the first section of chapter 8. And the following verses talk about when they're getting back in the boat. And I'd like to share chapter 8, beginning at verse 14. It says, Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he, Jesus, cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. And then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? Today, we still have that scarcity mentality that we don't think that there is enough. But Jesus is one who is not only enough, but he has abundance. And so on this World Communion Sunday that we're preparing for, we need to be reminded that Christians all across the world will gather. They will have a table where they will have the elements on, a bread and wine, and they will serve the people that have gathered there. If we were to stretch out the communion tables from end to end across the world, it would be thousands of miles. There is not only enough bread and enough juice or wine, there's enough grace, there's enough forgiveness, there's enough love. Not only will there be enough, but there will be more. Let us pray. Oh God, we ask that we would be mindful of the fact that with you there is an abundance. You performed great miracle signs to be able to remind us that you can supply wine when it's needed at a feast out of water. That you can take five loaves and two fish and feed a great crowd of over 5,000 people. With you, there is not only enough, there is abundance. And so, Lord, we thank you for Jesus and how he changes things so that we can know that we have far more than what we could ever amass or imagine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We remember the stories that Jesus' friends tell, stories of broken bread and shared, feeding a multitude, stories of being gathered together, enemy and friend, around tables, stories of unlikely guests revealing the face of the sacred. They say that it was on the night of both celebration and betrayal that he took the bread left over on the table, blessed it, and broke it reminding them that it is in the breaking of the bread that we become whole, that in losing our lives we find them, that in serving we are served. As the grain scattered becomes one loaf, when we eat this bread we become one with one another. They say that he took the cup that was also left over on the table, poured it out, and sharing, remembering with them the life-giving breath, even now pounding a rhythm through our veins, the breath of life from which we come, the breath that proceeds and follows all that we can see. 
as the grapes find life in the vine, when we drink this cup, we become one and at one with the source of life itself. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless the fruit of the vine. Bless us all in our eating and drinking that our eyes might be open, that we might recognize the risen Christ in our midst, indeed in one another. Come Holy Spirit, come. Wherever you are, we invite you now to take the elements. Some of you may have some that look like this. Some of you may have other things that you have gathered wherever you are worshiping this day. But as Kevin comes to bless us with a song of remembrance, we invite you to partake in these elements and to remember, as we have just been reminded, that there is indeed enough. There is indeed enough. And many times in our lives, we may actually have more than enough. And it's in those moments when we are invited, as Jesus showed us over and over in the Gospels, to be generous and to share with others. And that's when we find baskets full of things left over. In this case, we're inviting you over these next few days between now and our Thanksgiving service on November the 17th to partner with us here in Oklahoma City if you are here in the Ministry Center or at the Oklahoma Methodist Foundation. And even if you're deployed and you do not work here in Oklahoma City, you may be able to do this wherever you're at. But we know that there are Afghan refugees, folks who have been assigned to come to the United States uh, fleeing from that country who will be locating in Oklahoma City and surrounding communities all across the state. We want to help bless them when they arrive with the gifts that they need and so you will find listed in the bulletin some items that you can donate. You can drop those off here at the Ministry Center and our uh, holiday tree that we keep up in the lobby. You can just 
put those there. You can collect them wherever you're at and contact us and we will get them from you. This is our opportunity to be generous, to offer into those baskets full that are left over the more than enough that we have in our lives so that we can bless others, just as we have been blessed this very day, not only with a beautiful sermon and music, but with the sacrament of Holy Communion. This is our chance to now pass that on. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all both now and forevermore. Amen.